I'm quitting my six-figure job to chase my dream, to start and own my own medical practice. Yeah, I'm taking a huge, major pay cut to do so, but I can finally say one thing. I'm finally happy. And do you know how hard it is to say that? In residency, in medical school, in fellowship, we always say it's going to get better once you're on the other side. But let's just say that when I finally made it to the other side, the grass really wasn't that much greener. And I think there's three main areas which improve a lot, so let's talk about why. The first major thing, I can finally be my own boss. Joining a large practice, I felt like I was a small cog in a giant machine. It felt like residency 2.0, which I wasn't a fan of. And looking back on residency, I think the hardest part was that lack of control. I couldn't control my schedule, which hospitals I had to work at, etc. And my corporate job really wasn't any better. Every decision just took so much time and well, <laughs> That, that wasn't for me. As a solo provider, I now finally have control. I can decide who to work with me, I can decide what equipment to buy, and I can set my own hours. I can craft my practice the way I want to. And it feels so refreshing. Nothing would sour my day more than being told by a manager how to take care of my patients. With mental health being such a huge topic, I can finally say that, hey, I'm actually very happy and excited. And I think that re-energizes me to do what all doctors strive for, to take excellent care of patients. And that brings me up to the second reason of why I want to go solo. The patients. It's simple, really. Focus on patients. I don't want an MBA or I'm some corporate Mike. person telling me how to take care of my patients, how many patients to see and which add-ons I need to add. And I think as doctors, we know what we're good at and what we aren't. And I know I can speak Vietnamese pretty well, so I have a strong desire to serve the underserved community. Being a solo provider, I can really hone in on that patient population. Imagine first going to a board of doctors to ask for their permission, and then finally going to corporate America to ask for their permission as well. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. And equally as important, I want to create a legacy. And what do I mean by that? Over the next 30 years, I want to have created a practice known for excellent care, ethical decisions, and devoted to the patients and community. But I don't want my impact to end there. In a large corporate job when I retire, I don't have much say on who will inherit my clinic. As a solo provider, I can ensure that the next generation of doctors will share the same enthusiasm, passion, and commitment to my patients. And when you have a solo practice and you're that owner, you can decide how to hand off that practice. So it's ultimately always for the patients. Am I nervous? <laughs> Absolutely. But in the next video, you can see that a solo practice can do just more than survive. They can thrive. And click this video right here to find out. No.